Hey everybody, Alan here with this week's wisdom you didn't ask for, but certainly can't lead without. So this one's for you if you're trying to figure out what to do with that uh, talented superstar who can't help but piss people off left and right. You know what I mean. Let's call them the uh, talented but toxic because the brilliant joke's a bit judgy, right? So, well, what do we mean by that? Well, what we mean is a high performer or a key contributor uh, who is displaying persistent and consistent disrespect towards others, maybe somebody who is inconsiderate, ignoring process or communication protocols at the expense of others on the team. What is it not? It's not a one-off or a personality conflict. Um, there's got to be a consistently demonstrated pattern of behavior that is affecting a significant number of people or uh, results. So. It, it's not easy to have these conversations with people who are obviously genuinely contributing to your business, right? But you can't afford to be the leader that appears not to care about culture and morale. And these folks will kill employee morale and they frankly make a mockery of your beautifully crafted mission and values. And they also, dear leaders, make you look totally spineless when you don't do anything. So. If you have one or know somebody who does on this video, it's time to step up. So how exactly do you do it? All right, number one, five steps. Spell it out. Examples that you yourself have witnessed. Um, don't throw anybody under the bus, so to speak. Uh, reputational words are okay. So uh, for example, you have a reputation for uh, shutting people down and being dismissive of their ideas. And I've witnessed it myself. And uh, frankly, I think you can do much better than that, David. Number two, don't be drawn into debating it. David, if you're gonna be defensive, the conversation is going to move to a more serious level much quicker than it would do otherwise. So please listen to what I have to say, it's important. Number three, coach them to see if they're actually capable of articulating what they should be doing instead. This accomplishes a couple of things. First of all, it establishes that they do in fact hear you um, and that they're owning it. And two, whether or not they're actually potentially capable of the mindset and behavior shift that you need. Um, so do you have any ideas of how you might begin to turn this around and mend some of these relationships, David? Number four, state your expectation and your timeline for improvements is important. So. I'm gonna be staying close to you over the next 30 days, David, just to make sure that you've made some solid steps towards turning this one around, because it's important. Um, and uh, by the end of the month, uh, hopefully we'll be in a much better place. Number five, offer your support and commitment to their growth if they can turn the situation around. So I'm here, I'm here to help you succeed, so please use me as a sounding board in, in your efforts to rebuild these relationships and fix some of these problems. And then check for questions, stay firm and clear. And I gotta tell you, there are three reasons that all of this is important and all of them are bigger and more important than any bullshit excuses you might give yourself for avoiding the conversation. So um, the first one is that you'll make the person better at their job and you might even save them from themselves. I've seen this one lots of times. Number two, you'll make it better for everybody else who's having to put up with it. Um, and by the way, this is almost always a talent retention initiative too, just saying. And number three, you will demonstrate that you take your role as a leader very seriously and that you've got the courage to have uncomfortable conversations. It's literally your job to do this. That's this week's Wide Aff. I'll see you next week.